Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows. If you'd like for me to get you a shout out, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. Leave us a donation. We'll get it up here for you. Just tell us who you want it to. You, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, spouse, whatever. And we'll get it up here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> For years, Andrew H. Brown has maintained an office in which he carries on his activities and inactivities. It has been the scene of many of Andy's ventures, most of which are organized and go bankrupt the same day. Andy has finally realized that the office is unnecessary, and we find him there now talking to his closest friend, Amos. Yeah, Amos, I has just about decided to give up this office. I don't blame you, Andy. You ain't had no use for it since you moved in here. Oh, what are you talking about? I done made good use of it. Yeah, how? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I shaves here, don't I? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I forgot about you shaving in here. But I guess the smart thing for me to do would be to get out of here. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, Andy, the Kingfish is going in the employment agency business. Uh, he might want this office. No, no, he's running that thing from the lodge hall. Oh, I see. Uh, tell me this, uh, uh, how is he doing with that employment agency anyway? I don't know. He done offered me a job working in a foundry. A foundry? Yeah. Well, that's heavy work, all right. Mm-hmm. I know a fella that works in a foundry. He loads iron ingots uh, on a truck all day. You know them long, square things made out of iron? Oh, yeah. Well, I done explained to the kingfish that the work is too heavy for me. I ain't gonna lift none of them big nats things for nobody. Uh, not ignats, ingots, Andy. Well, ingots, ignats. What's the difference? They're as heavy, ain't they? Well, you might try the job for a while, Andy. It would build you up, put you in good condition. Oh, sure. I'd be one of the huskiest men in the cemetery. <laughs> I'm going over and see the kingfish right now and tell him the deal is off. I don't want no part of it. Come in, brother Andy, come in. Hello, kingfish. Look here. I've been thinking the thing over about that foundry job, and I done decided I don't want it. No, Andy, you was passing up a great job. No, I don't want no foundry job. Oh, think, Andy. $35 $35 a week coming in. Hmm. Why, you can build a little home with a picket fence and roses along the path to your front door. Yeah. <laughs> After I lift them iron ignatches all day, I'd be too tired to smell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm telling you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, what you want, Lightning? Oh, excuse me, but there's a gal out here that wants to see you, Kingfish. She sure is good looking. All right, send her in, Lightning. Aye, uh, yeah, sir. Oh, uh, sit where you is, Andy. I'll get rid of her right away. Yeah, how do I look, all right? Yeah, you look all right. All uh, right this way. Uh, there's the kingfish over there. Uh, how do you do? Uh, what does you want? Is this the Stevens Employment Agency? Uh, yeah. My name is Henrietta David. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Stevens. Uh, this is Mr. Brown, Miss Davis. Hello, Mr. Brown. Hello. <laughs> Uh, Miss Davis, what can I do for you? I'm looking for a position. Oh, a position, huh? Uh, let me see now what I got open here. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you like a job in a foundry? Well, is it secretarial work? 
Well, uh, no, I wouldn't exactly call it that. It's kind of on the borderline between secretarial work and weightlifting. That's what I'm <laughs> Look, Mr. Stevens, I want to be a secretary. I haven't had much experience. That's why I'm having a little difficulty getting a job. But I want to learn while I'm working. Uh, excuse me for protruding, miss, but, uh, <laughs> it just so happens that I has got an office over here, and I has slowed under with so much business that I could use a good secretary. Oh, uh, yeah, well, as your agent, Miss Davis, uh, I might place you with Mr. Brown. Yeah, uh, uh Miss Davis, would you mind walking over to the desk there and walking back? No, not at all. Yeah, I need a secretary, all right. Come on, Lightning, keep working there now. This gal ought to be here any second. I want this office to look good. Ah, uh, yeah, sir, Miss Andy, I'm working. I was doing the best. Tell me, is this the way you want me to do it, Miss Andy, kind of sprinkle the water on the floor and settle the dust? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, not too much now. You're liable to make the place muddy here. <laughs> if there's anything I hate, it's a muddy office. Uh, Miss Andy, here come the gal now. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, come in, Miss Davis. I hope I'm on time. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's all, office boy. Stop by the bank and get the money for me, as much as you can carry. I, uh, I'll whiz right over there. Yeah. Uh, sit down on the box right there, Miss Davis. Uh, my old stuff furniture is out being stuffed over. Tell me, where is your main office? Uh, the main office? Uh... Uh, by the way, did anybody ever tell you you was pretty? Oh, Mr. Brown, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, tell me this, honey. How much do you want a week for this job? Well, I feel that I can't work for less than $30 a week. $30, huh? Tell me this. Uh, how was you on the typewriter? Well, I'm not very fast, but I hope to learn. Yeah. Do you dance? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm a good dancer. So much for the typewriter. Uh, how about shorthand? Well, Mr. Brown, I never finished my course in shorthand, so for the first few months, I'll take everything in longhand. Uh, longhand? Yes, sir. Uh, could you go out to supper with me this evening? Oh, yes, I'd be glad to. Okay for the longhand. <laughs> By the way, uh, on the typewriter I got, one key is busted off. Uh, that's the O. With my last secretary, I tried the idea of using Q's instead of O's. They look something alike, you know. Then at the bottom of the letter, we put the uh, P.S. In the above letter, the Q's stand for O's. That was a very good idea. Yeah, it was a good idea, but it didn't work out so good, because in the P.S., we had to make the O with a Q, too. <laughs> I wonder how we're going to get around there. Well, we'll just have to write letters without no O's in them. Uh, tell me, Mr. Brown, when would you want me to start work? Well, you start at 2 o'clock today. I pays you $30 a week, and uh, don't forget, uh, we are going out to supper tonight. Oh, that'll be fine. I'll be back at 2 o'clock, Mr. Brown, and I'll plan on going out with you tonight. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Boy, that is the best-looking stenographer I don't ever see. No shorthand. No typewriting. Oh, well. Hello? Uh, Kingfish, this is Andy. Oh, yeah. I'm coming over to see you, Kingfish. I done hired that gal at $30 a week, and I'm going to take that Iron Ignatz foundry job so I can pay her. <laughs> Now, you understand, Anna, this is a great break for you getting this foundry job. And, uh, by the way, uh, it's a night job. Oh, a night job, huh? Yeah, you go to work at 8 o'clock at night and you work till 8 in the morning. It's what is known as the double graveyard. <laughs> Ain't I lucky? 
And uh, like I told you, the thing pays $35 a week. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, Andy, I am signing a watertight contract with the girl, guaranteeing her that I'll furnish her eight weeks' employment at $30 a week. Yeah, well, now, what about me? Well, uh, me and you got a separate contract. Uh, you guarantees to work at the foundry for eight weeks and to employ the girl for eight weeks as your secretary. And you gives me $3 and a half a week commission. Uh, wait a minute here. Wait a I get 35, I pays the girl 30, and I pays you 350. That don't leave me much left over, do it? How about your secretary? Oh, yeah. I forgot about her. Well, Andy, if what you told me is the truth, you is the craziest man I'd have never heard of. Oh, Amos. You was going to work all night long in the foundry for $35 a week, and you done hired a stenographer for daytime at 30 Well, I clears a dollar and a half, don't I? <laughs> oh, Andy, you was out of your head. When do all this mess start? Well, I'm waiting for the gal now. She do here at 2 o'clock, and I starts to work at the foundry tonight at 8. Oh, this is going to be some business. Some business? You don't even know what business you're going into. Who don't? All right, what business is you going into? Well, I'm, uh, I, uh... Uh, something that ain't got no O's in it, I know that. <laughs> uh, who is this coming across the street? Oh, yeah, that's her, that's her. Here come Henrietta now. Boy, she sure is dressed up, ain't she? Oh, uh, come in, Henrietta. Uh, this is Amos Jones. This is Henrietta Davis, Amos. Uh, glad to meet you. How do you do, Mr. Jones? Yeah, well, I'll leave, y'all. Glad to meet you. See you again, Andy. So long. Yeah, so long. Uh, well, uh, Henrietta... You show is dressed up pretty. <laughs> By the way, what are we going to do tonight, Mr. Brown? Oh, yeah, well, about, uh, about going out this evening, uh, it just so happens that your evening will be over about 7 o'clock. Uh, I never keep my secretaries out later than that. Well, 7 o'clock, that's not a very long evening. I guess there wasn't much point in me getting all dressed up. Oh, well, uh, we could get off to a good start by 7 and... Then I might be able to meet you again about 8 o'clock in the morning and carry on from there. Well, maybe we'd better get down to work, Mr. Bryan. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Pretty busy around here. Uh, get your longhand book ready. I I'll make a phone call while you're getting it. You know, honey, being a big businessman, i got to do a lot of things every day. I'll be ready when you're through phoning. Yeah, well, I am so busy that I always got to do two things at once. Uh, take a letter to Henry Van Porter. Uh, dear Henry, put me down for a $10,000 policy. Yours very truly, Andrew H. Brown. Hello? Uh, uh, Brown speaking. Uh, who is this, Andrew? Tell my bankers to buy $10,000 worth of bonds for me. Tell who what? Goodbye. <laughs> uh, take a letter to Henry Van Porter. Uh, please take out a $10,000 policy for me. You just ordered one. Oh, uh... Yeah, well, I buy two, two, three of them a day. Uh, <laughs> now, if my lawyer calls me, tell him I is out, uh, if I is. Uh, well, tell him whatever the deal was, it's all right with me, that I'll go in up to 100000 Oh, uh, gee, you look pretty. Henrietta, I love you. <laughs> Well, our friend Andy has just finished the double graveyard shift at the foundry and has come direct to his office from the job. The time is 9 a.m. The kingfish has just walked into the office. Well, Brother Andy, how is the captain of industry this morning? Uh, hey, wake up. Wake up, captain. Oh, yeah. Open them eyes, Andy. Open your eyes. Oh, I ain't got the strength. I aches all over. Oh, a little stiff, huh? Well, this is just the first night, Andy. You'll get used to it. Oh, Kingfish, I ain't never going to get used to lifting them ignizers. <laughs> I wonder why iron has got to be so heavy. Oh, well, Andy, look at it this way. If it wasn't heavy, it wouldn't be iron. Uh, the main thing to put in iron is heaviness. Mm. <laughs> it is, huh? 
Oh, yeah, you take the heaven as out of iron, and what have you got? It's a mess, ain't it? <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, I can't go on with this. I was working from eight in the evening to late in the morning at the foundry, and I was working all day with my secretary. I got to get out of this whole mess with the secretary and the foundry and everything else. I was crazy about Henrietta, but there's a limit to what the human body can stand. Now, you wait a minute, Andy. A contract is a contract. You were tied up in this thing for eight weeks. Oh, please, Kingfish, let me out of it. It's, oh, I was so tired. Sorry, Brother Andy, the time to think of that was before you signed the contract. I got you tied in a knot. Uh, oh, oh here, here come your secretary. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Uh... Oh, uh, good morning, good morning. Hello, Mr. Stevens. Uh, how are you, Mr. Davis? Uh, just leaving. Uh, I know Mr. Brown here is anxious to get down to work right quick. Uh, well, so long, folks, so long. Goodbye. So long. Oh, it's a beautiful morning, isn't it, Mr. Brown? Uh, that is the truth. I ain't been able to see it yet. <laughs> uh, did your mama object to me taking you out last night? Oh, no. I got home before Mother had finished her afternoon shopping. Hmm. Well, I guess we better get down to work. You said we were going to have a busy day today. Yeah. <sighs> uh, where is we? You said you want to do some more dictating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, take a letter to Henry Van Porter. Uh, tell him to get me a couple more of those policies. Mr. Henry Van Porter, dear Henry, oh, oh. in regard to the policies that you done bought for me, I want some more. Please send me some policies, whatever you got, I'll take you. <laughs> Mr. Bryant. Is anything wrong? Uh, uh, oh, uh, I, I just concentrate on you. Uh, uh, take a letter to Henry Van Porter. I ain't read him in a long time. Uh, dear Henry, I find myself in a... Uh, oh, what's the use? Look, honey, I can't keep this up no longer. I got something I got to confess to you. Yes, Mr. Bryan? I was working nights so I can pay your salary. What do you mean? Well, you see, I got contracts that forces me to employ you for eight weeks, so I ain't allowed to fire you. You'll do me a favor and quit, though, won't you? You understand how things is. No, I won't quit. I'm supposed to have eight weeks' work, and that's what I'm going to get. Oh, Henry, ain't you got no heart? Look, when I took this job, I turned down two others. Besides, I just bought some clothes, and they've got to be paid for. I'm staying on this job, and you just better get used to it. Hello, Gabby. Oh, come in, Annie. Come in. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Yeah. Uh, Gabby, as my lawyer, has you done found out any way I can get out of that contract with the Kingfish from a legal standpoint? I have done looked over the contract from top to bottom, top to bottom. There's one loophole, one loophole in the agreement. I find one important phrase is missing, one phrase missing. It does not say, it does not say, being of sound mind and body. <laughs> Uh, don't say that, huh? I'm going to give you some good legal advice. Good advice right now. I done looked up the law. The latest law on non compass matters, non compass matters. All you got to do is just one thing. All you got to do is just prove, just prove that you was not, was not of sound mind when you signed the contract. And Andy, with you, that shouldn't present no problem. <laughs> yeah, and what'll that do? Well, that'll make the contract null and void, null and void. Oh, yeah, uh, well, oh. Oh, if I ain't uh, got a sound mind when I sign the thing, it's no good, huh? Mm, that's right, that's right. Yeah, well, I'll take care of that, all right. Listen, you go over and see the kingfish and tell him that the contract is null and void on that basin. Uh, that I was not of sound mind when I signed the contract. My mind was just as bad off then as it is now. <laughs> Well, that's right, Andy. That's right, Andy. You're in bad shape. You're really in bad shape. I'll go over and see the kingfish right now, right now. I'll run right over there, right over there. Ain't no two ways about it, Andy. Quickest way, surest way, the quickest and surest, easiest way out of the contract is just to prove, you got to prove, that you is non-compass and not very metis. Uh, hello, Mr. 
Mr. Davis, uh, say, what is all this silly talk I hear about Mr. Brown trying to worm out of the contract by being of unsound mind? Has you noticed anything? Several things. For one thing, the only work I've done so far is to write letters to Henry Van Porter. Write letters to Henry Van Porter, huh? Uh, tell me this, uh, Miss Davis, uh, where is Mr. Brown now? He's in the back office. He claims he's running a grocery store. What? A grocery store? Say, hey, Andy. Oh, how you do, sir? How you do? Is you been waiting on? Could I interest you in some nice asparagus today? Say, <laughs> hey, look, Andy. I know what you're trying to pull here. You're trying to get out of the contract by acting like you was out of your head. But I'm going to tell you right now that that ain't going to work. Look out, my good man. You're stepping on the tomatoes there. Get away. Get away. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Chad. Don't, don't, don't give me that stuff. You ain't fooling me with this thing. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I has done been to a lawyer myself. Hmm. I went to a lawyer, too. And I done found out that it's up to you to prove that you ain't a sound mind. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I is going to take you down to what they call a psychiatrist right now. And he'll decide whether you is of sound mind or not. Now, come on. Get on your hat and coat. With pleasure, my friend. With pleasure. I think I'll carry a sack of these potatoes with me. <laughs> Uh, so that is the situation in a nutshell, Dr. Caldwell. I see. Uh, you want to determine whether Mr. Brown here is of sound mind in order that the validity of the contract can be judged. Oh, uh, that's right, Doc. Uh, Doc, could I interest you in a dozen eggs? <laughs> now, you see, Doc, that's the stuff he's been pulling on me all the time, and I know he's faking. Now, look here, Doctor. Uh, here is the contract in question right here. Now, I admit that it don't say nothing about sound mind and body. But I done made up for that by having plenty of them ipso factos and hapus capuses all in there. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, Doc, I, I got this contract loaded down with all them Latin words. Yes. <laughs> well, if you gentlemen will just step into the examination room, we'll uh, look into the whole matter. This is the craziest thing I done ever heard of. Oh, I tell you, Amos, Andy here is trying to pull a fast one on me. Look, he talking sensible now, ain't he? Yeah, well, I is all better now. But at the time of signing the contract and up till yesterday, I was in bad shape, you know what? Yeah, well, what did the doctor say? We went in the examination room with the doctor. We give the doctor the contract and told him the circumstances, and he done made examination. And he gonna give us a written report today. Yeah, and me and the kingfish has done agreed to go by what the doctor say. Right. Now, if a party to a contract ain't got a sound mind, the contract is null and void. And besides that, it ain't no good. <laughs> Amos, uh, I gonna tell you frankly, I ain't the least bit worried. Uh, just cause Andy make a contract to break his back in some foundry. That ain't no skin off of my nose. <laughs> I ain't gonna worry about that. Well, you know, if a day passed and you two fellas Wait a minute, didn't... wait a minute. Uh, come in, Lightning, come in. Uh, here is the report that the doctor gave me for y'all here, too. Yeah, give me that thing. I'll read it. Get away, get away. You can read it after me. After all, it means my health and everything. All right, what does it say? Say, uh, report on the examination of Andrew H. Brown. After analyzing all factors concerned in the examination and observation of the patient, there is no question that Andrew H. Brown is definitely of sound mind. Well, there you will. <laughs> I got you there. I got you there. Hey, let, oh, me finish. let me finish the thing. There's some more here. Go ahead. says here, uh, however, a careful scrutiny... Of the contract involved reveals that Mr. George Kingfish Stevens, the person who drew up this so-called contract and composed the phrases contained therein, is unquestionably not of sound mind. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Davis. Uh, what you doing over here at the Lodge Hall? 
I'm working for Mr. Stevens. Working for Mr. Stevens? Yes, I started two days ago. You know, I have a contract, and he guaranteed me eight weeks' work at $30 a week. Oh, yeah, and you holding him to it, huh? Yes, sir. He pays me or I'm going to sue him. And I told him I'd send him to jail, too. Yeah, well, where can the kingfish get the money to pay you $30 a week? Oh, here he comes now. Uh, good morning, Mr. Stevens. Come in. Oh, what a night. Why does they have to make them Ignatzes so heavy? <laughs> sure to be with us again next Friday night at this same time for another great half hour of entertainment when we will again present the Amos and Andy show. Our program is broadcast to our armed forces everywhere. This is Harlow Wilcox. And before I say good night, may I again remind you of this. The used fats you're saving up, well, it's swell that you are saving them, but remember, they won't do anybody a speck of good as long as you keep them in your refrigerator. Turn them in. As soon as you have a can that's full. Not in a glass container, please. Any tin can will do. You will be paid in cash and receive two red points for each pound of used fats you turn in. Thank you, and good night. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows.